Table Reads, now part of the Rogue Intel Podcast Network. Hey everybody, this is Trevor and I'm here with Sean. Hi. And we're from Table Reads. Do you know what Table Reads is? You no. Probably, exactly. Even, I, I don't know what it is. Even Sean doesn't know what it is and he created it. Well, Sean, if you had to guess, which clearly you do, what do you think Table Reads is? I would think it's a show about a fat guy and a skinny guy reading some bad scripts that never got to be made into movies. Experience the worst Hollywood has to offer with readings of the scripts you never wanted. You know, the thing I love about you, Sean, ever since we were kids, is you're always good at guessing. You nailed it. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Table Reads. Every Tuesday, right here on the Rogue Intel Podcast Network. Or visit TableReadsPodcast.com. Yo, 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 what's up, guys? I'm Corey, and joining me as always is Christian for another hey, awesome internets. episode of the Powerful Nerdcast. We have kind of a short episode for you guys today, but we do have a lot to talk about. The newest awesome episode of Dragon Ball Super, taking place during the Tournament of Power. I would also like to discuss the very first episode of the brand new original Netflix series, Castlevania. Yeah, there's that new thing. There's also that... Uh, cr- Really cool Netflix movie about the big super pig. Uh, have you seen that? <laughs> I don't that? know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about? The, the we'll super to, pig? The super pig. It's a Netflix original movie. It's a live action movie. Mm-hmm. It's got Glenn from um, The Walking Dead and a few other things. I, I remember last week Last week we were in New York City and we were having dinner and uh, I think our friend Jordan was talking about this. Yeah, yeah I'll have to look this up. Yeah, it, when you guys said super pig, it reminded me of the big super buff pig from Family Guy. Oink! Exactly. <laughs> That's the one I'm talking about. But I didn't even know there was something like this um, on Netflix. How long has it actually been there? Uh, I think it just came out like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Netflix continues to tear it up with all this original content. Yes, it does. And uh, I do plan on doing like a more proper review of the Castlevania series in the future. I've unfortunately only had time to really watch one episode of it. There it is. Um, but it was crazy. But here we are. This is uh, OKJA. Okja. Oak, Okja. Oak, Oak whatever you want to call it. Let's see, is this chick has this. What the fuck? That looks like a hippo pig. It's a hippo pig. What the hell is this? Well, it's like a cool. It's like a. It's like they breed this pig to like make super amounts of meat, you know, for everyone. But yeah. it actually ends up being like a super lovable CG creature, you know, that has <laughs> a super lovable CG creature. And you know, CG is getting pretty good now. Yeah. So even for you know these Netflix original series, like that looks, you know. It doesn't look any worse than some of the stuff you see in live action movies. To be perfectly no. honest. No, it does not at all. And, what you know, it's just, weird. it's it's a standard, you know, corporation steals lovable sidekick and you got to go on an adventure to get it back. <laughs> you know, the evil corporation. Yeah. And, uh. It looks interesting, though. The, the, the it, I don't know, just the, the actual, I didn't realize there was anything like this on Netflix. Just There's Glenn. Out. There's he Glenn. He died and was reincarnated in a giant pig hippo movie. Yeah. He'll always be Glenn. I don't even know that actor's it's name. It's hard to separate him now that he's like. You know, he was on the series for so long. And that's what made him famous. Yeah, you know? hopefully, you know, obviously he's not going to be on The Walking Dead anymore unless it's, like, either a flashback or uh, yeah, they said one of those, might. like, weird moments where, like, the characters think they're communicating with him in, like, some sort of weird moment. But, like, I'm glad to see that he's getting work because yeah. I think he was a pretty damn good actor. Yeah, he's a pretty good actor. Most people in uh, in uh, in The Walking Dead are actually really good actors. Okja, a film by Bong Joon-ho. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that looks really cool. I have the, I have, I can, you know, I've been to Chinatown. I know how to say. Does that, that say shit. Jake Gyllenhaal? Uh, it does. Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal is Okja. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, <laughs> anyway, that's, check that's, that out. That I, looks like honestly kind of like a, a family-friendly kind of film. But it's probably tugs at the heartstrings. Mm. I want to see that um, CG n- pig n- movie. I'm thinking about Netflix again, and I think it's very appropriate. We have to talk about this. Um, you, you've seen more of the Death Note stuff. Yes. They officially announced what he's going to look like. Exactly. and uh, They've also decided they're not going to follow the manga, like... Spe- to a T. To a T. Yeah, I mean, obviously... And they changed, like, some of the characters' uh, ethnicities, you know, because it was a Japanese thing. Yeah, I mean, and this, now- is cle- this is clearly set in, in, in America and everything, but... 
Um, if there's one character they seem to be at least getting right in terms of the atmosphere, the personality, and the look, it's definitely Ryuk. And you don't even really get, like, a very good look at this character. And, you know, I don't know, maybe let's just explain again for those who don't know all five people listening to this who don't freaking know what Death Note is. It's a story about this uh, kid who finds this book which allows him to write down people's names in it, and when he writes it down, people will die. And this book was given to him by a death god, which is basically like uh, the Western interpretation of a uh, Grim Reaper. And he basically just gets sort of high on himself. He's like, you know what? I can be the god of this world and condemn and kill all the people who are bad, and everything will be all hunky-dory, but it ends up turning into this big police investigation where everybody's looking for the real killer, and it's just really heavy-handed. But... It's based on a manga series. It's like a 37, 39 episode anime series. And now they're making a movie. And I don't know if they're going to be able to condense that down into like a single film. They might try to do multiple ones of it. Um, I think that's how they, they should make it episodic. I really I mean, do believe that's the way they need to do it, especially for something like Netflix. And, and to be perfectly honest, I think it almost worked better as an actual TV show than in a movie. But I don't think it looks terrible. And I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to go ahead and just jump on the bandwagon of, oh, this is just a whitewashed version of Death Note. I'm willing to see what they're going to do with it first. It's one of those situations, too, where it's like, if it sucks, well, who cares? I can go back and watch Death Note, and everything's going to be hunky-dory. It's never really going to take away the thunder that was that original series. And yes, there are some major differences here, but I think they're carrying some of the spirit. I know a lot of people have said that it looks way too action-packed. And I know exactly where they're coming from, because Death Note is not an action series. It is a But there is action drama. elements in the sense that, like, when the police are trying to figure it out, there's tense moments when they're, yeah. you know, kicking in doors, trying to figure out who this person is killing people. Yeah, but it's not like a comic book series or anything. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely more about the investigation and, uh, you know, the, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a crime drama, essentially. Yes, it's a crime drama with supernatural elements. Yeah. But, I mean, you look at this trailer, you see a lot of stuff like buildings falling over and all this crazy shit. Um, but it's, I do think it's interesting that they went with a black actor for L. Um, but they're still, like, retaining a lot of L's personalities. Like, that scene where he's talking to uh, Light. And sitting in the chair the right the way. way. He's, like, sitting down, like, uh, on his feet with his knees up and everything. Like, that's very L-like. It is. And they're capturing the elements of that. But at the same time, I think they had to make L look different. And, you know, he did look very different to the main character. Because oh, he had, course. like, dark hair and those big black eyes. Yeah. So instead of, like, trying to get an anime character or a, it's essentially an Asian actor that mm -hmm. matches that, they just got a black guy and he kind of stands out mm -hmm. against the uh, the white actor. You know? They're going against the grain a little bit with just what he looks like. I like the fact that he's got, like, this little mask on over his face. Cause I think he knows not to, like, let his person let his uh, identity go out. Oh, yeah, because, you know, he clearly suspects this is the guy with the death note and he doesn't want him to see his face. That's another one of the stipulations. You have to know what your uh, your victim is going to look like when you write their name down. Um, but again, you know, I think Ryuk just looks great. And he's voiced by Willem Dafoe, which I think is a really good choice. Um, I mean, you know, he can go over the top when he needs to. I well, like, see the like very Green first Spider-Man movie. Yeah. What is it? What's some of your favorite lines? <laughs> now that you've really pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he can go hammy. So, and his evil is great. Yeah. We'll meet again, Spider-Man! <laughs> the most comic booky line in any comic book movie, I think, possible. They even have um, a, a Voldemort trailer out from the new Harry Potter, where they do, like, a prequel, I think, is what this is. They're making a Voldemort movie? Yeah. When the fuck did this happen? Uh, I don't know. Is it a real movie, or is it a fan movie? I think it's a real movie. Oh, my God. Well, it's funny, because they started that other prequel, mm -hmm. and then... Now they're starting another prequel series, you know, like the Fantastical Beasts. Yeah. So. Did we need a Voldemort movie? I have no idea. I'm not. I'm not really sure. I always liked the mysteriousness of Voldemort. I thought it made him a lot creepier. I think this is. I hope this doesn't turn out like the Rob Zombie remake of Halloween, where it makes Michael Myers way less scary by giving him a backstory. I don't know. Maybe that was a fan trailer. I have to be honest. I'm not sure if that was real or not. It's hard to say. Um, regardless, I'm, I'm sure people are going to check it out. If, if anything, fan films are still a really big thing. Uh, speaking of more live-action adaptations, Christian, I know you're not exactly a big fan of this franchise, um, but Bleach is uh, going to be getting a live-action Japanese film, and uh, they just released like a very short teaser for that. And I have to say, it's definitely the best Bleach cosplay that I've ever seen. Oh, God. <laughs> Let me type this in. I want to see this. It's, it's a real short teaser. Um, I think maybe like 20 seconds at most. And all you really... There it is, like right at the top. Action. Uh, yeah. And 
<laughs> yeah, that's basically the trailer right there in gift form. Giant swords. Giant swords, which are a trademark of the series. The um, thing is, giant swords don't work in real life because people aren't physically strong enough to use no, them. No, but again, this is... A, well, I mean, if you back up a little bit, you can actually see there's like this giant hand that's been, just been cut. And that's a creature in that series which is known as a hollow which are like these like giant demonic beasts, which are like on the border of going to hell or heaven, and, and then they are slowly forgotten over. about and never used again. Basically, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They were originally one of the cornerstones of the Bleach series, um, but it also makes it clear by the look of his sword and the, what he's actually wearing and where he's at that this movie is going to be an adaptation of the very first arc of the series. Mm-hmm. But it just—I don't know. To me, a lot of the epicness is lost. In the stylized look. Uh, again, this is one of those cases where I think anime needs to say anime and it doesn't necessarily have to be live action. I think that's one of even the first comments here, which I agree with. You know, When will we learn that anime and live action films are two different mediums? There you go. They shouldn't be... They just... I don't know why they don't work, but they just don't fucking work. But why does it work for... Ne- why does it seem... Why do we seem to be more accepting of Death Note than Bleach? Because Death Note is an action series that has giant swords. It's based in reality. That is true. I think there are certain series, certain anime that can work pretty decently in live action, but it's it's kind of hard to tell. And when all else fails, if it's too extravagant and crazy, just make it into an anime, because it will work within those confines. Mm-hmm. It will work on reality-based things, but anything like Dragon Ball Z or anything with giant power-ups, you know, like, um, what's that Hero Academy one you're watching? My right? Hero Academia. Was- that would not work in live action. No, and I'm, I'm, we're all waiting for that inevitable live action adaptation. Attack um, on Titan is pretty pushing the line, to be honest. Yeah, but, I mean, those movies didn't exactly explode out of theaters, and more people still care more about the anime and the manga version, which... You know, that second season wrapped up, third season's coming, which is always a good thing, but they haven't made any announcements for a movie or anything, so I think that sort of speaks for uh, what those things are doing. Plus, there's the Full Metal Alchemist movie, which is coming out. Just so many live ad- uh, live a- adaptations, and I really do think it's because of the Marvel and DC films that Japan is doing this a lot more, because they're like, mm-hmm. we can adapt our films, too. We can make these into big budget movies that make tons of bank, but unfortunately will never go overseas and make any money, you know. Aside from maybe a few scant things like uh, Shin didn't you Godzilla. say there's going to be a anime Godzilla? There is going to be an anime Godzilla. Which let me let me find. Man, that. I can't believe it took that long to happen. Um, it's you know just like a lot of the other Godzilla movies, it's kind of doing its own thing. I'm okay with it. I've made peace with that type of thing. Um, the trailer itself, you don't even really see Godzilla to like the very end, and basically he's just sort of standing still. But to my knowledge, the uh, the entire premise of this Godzilla animated film is that that is definitely not it. That's not it? <laughs> no. Um, it's some sort of fan film you're looking at. Um, the premise of this Godzilla story is that Earth has just been completely ravaged by Godzilla. Godzilla has turned it into his very own personal giant butt plug, and mankind is like, fuck, we gotta get the hell out of here. So they decide to leave Earth, and they colonize in space, and after like a couple hundred or maybe even, uh, well, I'm just gonna say a hundred years, um, they decide to go back to Earth, and it's basically turned into this giant monster wasteland, which is ruled by Godzilla and all these other monsters. And uh, the main character of the story, this main human character, his uh, personal reasons for wanting to go back to the planet is that when he was a child and still living on Earth right as it was being evacuated, his parents were killed by Godzilla. So just like Eren in Attack on Titan, his plan is to go and kill all monsters and Godzilla in particular. And it could be good. There's a possibility for this being good. My only problem with it is that its its animation style is CG animation style, which is becoming way too prevalent in anime lately. Yeah. And it just doesn't look good. Like, and, you know, I think it works maybe more for monsters in, like, big action scenes, but, like, whenever you see, like, a character just sort of standing still and talking, they look like puppets. They just... It doesn't look as convincing as, like, standard hand-drawn looking animation it just doesn't look as fluid and it kind of takes me out of the experience a little bit that's why i thought the ending of the the berserk second season just left such a bad taste in my mouth and at this point i've basically disowned it yeah so you you were off with the years just let me walk you through this one thing it was that uh humans leave the planet and they get lost in hyperspace for twenty thousand years Oh, okay. And then they come back. Because I was like, 100 years is not really enough time for everything to be gone. And, and the know? main story is about a guy who saw his parents get killed, so he couldn't have been gone for 
twenty thousand years. Well, he was gone. They were in hyperspace. Okay, this and is it one equals of those, like, twenty thousand were... years. You know, but it was only yeah. like like ten years for them or something. Mm. You know, but yeah. So that's kind of the it's whole a idea. Godzilla Monster Planet, which you know, I think I think the idea is going to be fun. I'm just surprised it took this long. And to look do. where it debuts in America. Oh, it's going to debut on Netflix. There we go, Netflix. That's cool. Yeah, fuck I, theaters. I didn't know that. Put that <laughs> shit right on Netflix so I can watch it at my house. Man, Netflix is getting all the goodies right now. I know, man. I, I wouldn't say it's going to be like an exclusive. It's going to premiere in Japan first. But they do have Castlevania, which is out right now, which I highly recommend. Uh, the first episode was actually pretty damn good and was a better Berserk anime than the actual Berserk anime. Well, the Berserk <laughs> anime got weird. You're damn right it did. It didn't turn out um, well. And the other good thing I like about the uh, the Castlevania series on Netflix is it's only four episodes. So I'm not going to have to sit through like 13 episodes of bullshit. So They have it, to it make things happen. Right, it kind of gets right to the point. And yeah. it's, uh, to my understanding from watching this, it seems like it's an adaptation of the third Castlevania game on Nintendo. Which is called uh, Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. Which, I don't know if you ever had the opportunity to play Hell. I don't even know if you're a Castlevania fan. I know the guy walks around and whips things. That's that's basically it. That's all I know. That's the thing, though. The old games didn't have much of a premise. It was Dracula's bad. He's in a castle. Let's go fuck his shit up with yeah, a Yeah, it seemed more like a uh, uh, like side-scrolling beat-em-up. Yeah. I mean, th- th- you know, we didn't need that much more back then. We were satisfied just by walking to the left or walking to the right, collecting items, and beating the shit out of things. Jump a few platforms, mm-hmm. call it a day. Exactly. But this brand new Netflix series is trying to add a little bit of credibility to the story and actually give some characterization to some of the main people, including the uh, the villain, uh, Dracula, who is basically the star of the first episode and basically gives us our whole motivation for why he hates humans and why he's trying to kill them. And then the next couple episodes, I'm guessing, that's when the main character, Trevor Belmont's going to come in. He's going to get his crew together. They're going to go to the castle and slap some candles, get some hearts, eat some wall meat, and beat the fuck out of Dracula. It's going to be pretty awesome. Castlevania He's... fans will know what I mean when I, mean when I say wall meat. I don't know what you're talking That's about. That's how you heal yourself in Castlevania. Like, if you're, like, low on health, you go over to a wall, you smack it with your whip, and if you're lucky, there might be a piece of meat in there. It literally looks like the stereotypical meat you see in anime, which is just, like, a hunk of brown meat with a bone in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it heals you. And it's weird, because there's also, like, hearts all over the place, but hearts don't heal you. They, they allow you to use items and shit. Um, and, and, of course, uh, Did You Know Gaming just revealed something. Uh, they just did a Castlevania video. Their timing is perfect. With the release of the Netflix series. Um, so that's probably going to give you a lot of information about that. The Castlevania games too, man. They're hard as fuck. Do you know gaming? Question mark channel. Yeah. I didn't know this channel was out there. You've never seen... Did you know gaming? I I've, I've no game theory. Okay. Th- this is similar to game theory, but less obtuse and less like pulling shit out of your ass. It's actually like pure facts. <laughs> About games. Not just, speculation. No, it's just like little trivia things and fun things about game series. I'm surprised you haven't known about Did You Know Gaming. They've been no. doing this stuff for years. I'm sure, yeah. Um, occasionally, though, they do have like uh, the game theorist. Like he's done a couple narrations for these. John Tron has. Oh, uh, John Tron, is that taboo now? Um, I don't know. You know, uh, Game Grumps, all of them, they've done stuff um, for the Did You Know Gaming website, which is pretty cool. It probably is a good channel. I just... Man, there's so many good channels now, I can't even keep track of it, it anymore. It is hard to keep up with this shit. There is too much going on. Mm-hmm. There is just too much but going on. But it also on. ensures that you're never going to get bored with all no. the content. Like, I mean, if you're, you know... I know you've been playing an ass load of the new Breath of the Wild DLC and everything. I have been, but I uh, hate the fucking sword trials. They are so frustratingly hard. (laughs) How far have you gotten? I can't get past like level seven or eight. And I know that's probably a joke to some people, but damn, it's hard. When you have no armor, I didn't realize how used to taking hits I was. You know, when you can't get hit more than three or four times. Mm -hmm. And when you got like 18 hearts, it takes a lot of food to fill those back up. Damn. And, and is, is it kind of like even Tide Island? You go in and they take all your stuff away? Yeah, but Tide Island is a joke. Compared to this? Yeah. Wow. Once you have, like, what are the enemies called that are, like, they take on elements and they're little mushy balls, you know, that, uh, that'll, uh like, take on fire, they're ice. They're like, like little blobs? Yeah. Uh, the choo-choos. Those, they'll send a wave of, like, 10 or 20 of those things at you at once, and you'll be, like, e- easily handling it, but then, like, one the or two ones? will get, yeah, and oh, then, like, shit. one or two will hit you and just wipe out a lot of your hearts. And you need to like, bomb the hell out of those guys. That's what I do. I just run around in circles and shoot bombs, wow. but it still is not enough. That is ridiculous. You know, I still haven't dived into the DLC yet. I haven't purchased it yet, but I will get it eventually. It does look really fun, and I want to be able to power up my Master Sword, but... 
What do you, what does your master sword get? You just get 60? I, I think it gets up to 60 and it'll permanently stay there. Like it's always going to be like the glowing, glowing version, version of the master yeah. sword. Don't quote me on this. I'm not 100%. I, I think it still can like lose its power for a small amount of time. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I heard rumors beforehand that supposedly it'll be like an unbreakable weapon after that point, but I haven't seen ev- any evidence to show that that's actually the case. I Which want to like would, that it DLC. It would break the game at that point. Uh, a 60 sword isn't that powerful. No, but like a 60 sword that'll never break. You, you nah. pretty much need nothing else for the rest of the game. Like there are people who could there are people who are good enough that could go in the game, do the the, the sword trial. Well, what's left to do? I bet if they're even doing the sword trial, they're pretty much at the end of the game. For the most part, but I mean, I've seen people who go in and just do it. Like yeah. at the beginning of a game and I'm curious too, can you do the trial of the master sword like on the hardest difficulty that they just I uh don't know. Imagine I have not shit. gotten I've gotten like an hour into the hard difficulty. I got my ass kicked by some blue macoblins and I was like, fuck this. God, they put them early in, in the game. Right there. They and, even do gold enemies now, which mm, are supposedly even stronger. Yeah, they're just a pain in the ass. So like I don't uh I don't fuck with those guys very often. <laughs> the uh the gold the gold enemies, everything's hard to kill, and you're, I feel like your weapons break like five times easier. Like I, I took like three or four weapons to beat one blue bacabla. I was like, this is bullshit. Fuck this. What type of weapons do they give you? I mean, they're all the same weapons. It's just, uh, it's just uh, they don't work as well, in my opinion. I may be wrong, but that was my experience. But I mean, I are they like shitty early game weapons, or are they well, like- considering I only got to the early game, I wouldn't say I know if they have better weapons later. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, the weapons I had were like tree branches and like rusty swords and like uh traveler swords and stuff like that how do you actually access the trials like is it like a you do it in game like yeah. you have to go somewhere and- yeah you go to the korok forest and you oh, can okay. just uh you can just jump into the sword trials and then if you want to do hard mode you just start a new save file can you like leave at any time and go back right back to where you were or do you have to like beat it all in one go you have to beat it all in one go damn well you there are three checkpoints okay like uh at 15 but 14 is facing a Lionel. Oh. So even oh. if you get to 14, you have to have saved up all your best weapons and having no, you know, like no armor beat a Lionel. And the stipulation is to beat it. Yeah. You have to beat every, every enemy on each level. Wow, that sounds like bullshit. It is hard. But it sounds like a really good challenge. I mean, it, it's got to be one of those challenges that when you finally do defeat it, man, it's got to feel great. I guess. And I guess you'll get a really awesome uh, super-powered sword out of it, so there's really nothing wrong with that. No, there is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, dude, so we're actually uh, going to see um, the new Rick and Morty coming out at the end of this month. I know. It's still kind of surreal that it's finally happening. I know. They just revealed that trailer, which looks incredible, by the way. And little by little, if you watch Adult Swim, uh, they show like smaller clips of the actual season. Mm-hmm. Which, in some ways, I kind of don't want to see, just because I want to be really surprised when I see all this stuff for the very first time. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, I'm beyond pumped for Rick and Morty Season 3. I'd go as far as to say it might be my most anticipated show of the year. And as a guy who like is really obsessed with anime and Netflix shows and all that other stuff, for an American cartoon on Adult Swim to do that, that's pretty damn powerful. But I think it speaks to the quality of Rick and Morty for not being just a funny show, but also being surprisingly enduring with its characters as well. Yeah, I think that that does put it into perspective yeah. that Rick and Morty is that popular that, you know, us being fans of animation, it's still it's still better than that. Yeah. But Rick and Morty has good writing. It does. It has exceptional writing. And I've said it before, but it's like I immediately wrote off the show when they first showed the previews for it. I was like, this is going to be one of those Adult Swim shows that airs for a season and never comes back and it's probably going to suck. But by, like, episode six, and I was like, wow, there's something really special going on here. The, the sixth episode is the one where they uh, they Cronenberg up the universe. Oh, yeah. And they have to go back to their very own and uh, find their dead selves and bury them. That was the episode that really sold me on the entire series. That's a good point. Yeah, that was a great episode. And it actually had, like, real repercussions. They bring it up again. Like, there's actual continuity built into the show, which I think is genius. There's actual characterization. It's, it's, it's really funny. And... Uh, uh, the, the trailer for the third season looks great. All the stuff with Pickle Rick, like, that's one episode I cannot Pickle wait to Rick! see. Pickle Rick! You know, last year's big meme was Tiny Rick! This year it's definitely going to be Pickle Rick. Without they they knew out. what they had there, so they just had to do it again. I wonder if they're going to do another uh, improv episode, though. You think they'll do that again? There's only or? ten episodes, so I'm not sure if they're going to do anything with it. And I wonder if 
the ten episodes includes the premiere. It probably does. Yeah, it probably does. So, so we're, we're probably pro- only getting nine new ones. Because even in the uh, the big trailer they had for season three, you could even see some of the clips they used were from that premiere episode. Uh, so it probably will be it. But I mean, nine more episodes of Rick and Morty. I'm definitely not going to complain. No, I'm down. I want to see it. I want to see it bad. Wait to see it. Real for those, and for those who are worrying if Jerry was going to come back, Jerry is definitely coming back. Oh, Jerry's not going anywhere. No, no, they couldn't get rid of And that's another thing uh, about the show, too. Like, a lot of the characters I thought I was going to completely hate, Jerry was one of those characters like, oh, great, here we go, another stupid animated TV dad. But Jerry is fucking hilarious. He's the, he's such a sad sack kind of character. And I was like, is this going to be another, like, Homer Simpson or another Randy Marsh Jerry's fucking hilarious, and I cannot wait to see him come back and have crazy adventures with Rick. That, and uh, I also think the actor that plays him is pretty funny. I forget that actor's name, but <sighs> I know he's on. He's on SNL. I had no idea he's, it was that guy. He's got such a distinctive voice, um, and he he definitely adds a lot of gravitas to that character, to say the least. Yeah, but yeah, Jerry's become one of my favorite characters from that show, just for how incredibly depressing of a character he is. It's great. And they also say like he represents the realist of the show like a guy that's trying to be grounded in reality but without the world, a doubt yeah and then everyone else is changing around him mm-hmm. and like the the futile nature of trying to fight whatever's going to happen to you in life <laughs> that's kind of what he represents but he tries really hard anyway mm-hmm. yeah it's kind of interesting oh, i love that yeah it's quite good mm-hmm. yeah man the other thing is we have been traveling non-stop for a while yep where have we been in the past few weeks oh, jesus christ just this month just this month alone we have been to new york city which was all last week which was insane if anybody watches our youtube channels you know that we we're there it was in the background of some of my reviews um we were also, in los angeles we were in los angeles and idaho and idaho and literally today we're getting ready to fly out to cleveland ohio and it's all been in the we say the most like, exciting for last <laughs> clearly <laughs> Um, you know, I don't know anything about Cleveland, Ohio, to be honest. I'm interested to see what she's going to give us, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, we're going to have to see. I'm not too optimistic about it, to be perfectly honest. Um, but New York was really fun. It was certainly, uh, eye opening. I would never want to live there because the whole place smells like a fucking porta potty. Well, you didn't, you didn't pay enough money. Except for like Ground Zero and a few of the parks. Yeah, you didn't Everything pay enough money to live in the rich awful. parks. It does smell weird. Well, we also were staying in Chinatown, man, which is like the heart of the weird smelling places. And not to be rude against Chinatown or anything, but yeah, it, it fucking reeks. It's just this like swirl of piss and fish. <laughs> like, piss and fish? Piss, piss and fish swirl hagen ice cream. That is what Chinatown smells like. Um, at least, I mean, if you ever walk into one of those fish markets, and we did a couple of times, whoo boy. That stuff just smacks you right in the face and bends you over, man. I didn't mind. I mean, you because you love cultural, weird, like, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, ethnic food. I love You're ethnic food. You're obsessed with eth- ethnic food. I if like. Everybody, if everybody's like, "Hey, let's let's go get burgers," Christian's like, "No, let's go get goat testicles." <laughs> It's just like, fuck, man. And you're like, "Yeah, but I know burgers are going to be good." I'm like, "But have you tried goat testicles?" And then we all go try goat testicles, and we're like, what the fuck were we thinking next restaurant? Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it is good. We did eat good food, though. Like The hot pot was great. The hot pot we had was really damn good. Okay, That's- the way what a hot pot is is they essentially bring out a few different broths. Like, they'll take a pot, giant pot, and then they'll put a separator in the middle and put two different, like a medium and a hot or something. Yeah. Or, like, a chicken based and then, like, a hot beef broth. And then they just bring out all these thinly sliced beef or lamb and chicken or whatever. Goat testicles. Goat testicles. We're going with that theme. By the way, I never recommended goat testicles. That was an exaggeration on Corey's part. And we would just you just set it in the broth and then it would cook it real quick. And as you cook things in the broth, the broth gets more and more tasty because you've cooked more and more meat in it, you know, and mm-hmm. it just it gets better and better. And it's yeah. kind of like korean barbecue if you've ever had that it's a very communal sort of meal where you hang out and you eat and you can usually do all you can eat that's kind of the idea it's like korean barbecue meets fondue yeah that's kind of of the the vibe i got from it but it was good no it was delicious it was a great meal it was super filling and uh it was it was spicy as fuck but in the in the best possible way it's tolerable it it has flavor it's spicy in that sense like you want to keep going back yeah yeah you know and then we also had uh 
this epic Chinese meal the very first night we were there in Chinatown at the Golden Unicorn, which is a hilarious name. It sounds like a strip club. It, it does. Um, <laughs> but it, the, the food there was super solid. We had Peking duck and a lot of dim sum. Uh, the best fucking dumplings that I've ever eaten in my entire life. Those shrimp dumplings and those roasted pork steam buns. Oh, holy dude. Holy shit, I could eat those every day. Oh, dude, the roasted pork steam buns. I don't think people understand how good that is. Because yeah. that's not like a dumpling. That's a different thing altogether. Yeah. A steam bun is a totally different thing. Mm -hmm. And I highly recommend if you guys ever get a chance to try it, uh, that or beef tendon. Yeah. Love it. Fuck the beef tendon. <laughs> the duck was pretty damn solid, too. I need to say that. Uh, it's like a well. sweet, crispy meat. I don't know how to even describe what duck tastes like. Mm -hmm. It's very good. It's but yeah, very, we got to see good. all the sites. We went to Times Square, went to Ground Zero, got to see the memorial there. Um, what did Christian you think of the memorial? To, did that uh, like throw you off? Did it, no, did it impact you a lot? Like I wouldn't say it, I felt anything emotional, um, but I, I really did grow an appreciation for that memorial, and I really loved the, just the look of it and the feel of it. Because you know, I've been to Washington, D.C., and I've seen a lot of the memorials there and everything. This one was just so grand and so beautiful that I really loved it. I also just loved how it's like this, these two gigantic fountains which have these dips in the middle which seem to go nowhere, which I couldn't put my finger on it, but I felt like there was some sort of symbolism there. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like endless fountain. It's like an endless hole. Exactly. That's kind of the whole idea. And, and, and they make it so that you can't see the bottom. Yeah, like the angle you're standing around it. Yeah, so there's just there was something really like powerful and symbolic about that which i thought was really nice um and you know the, the entire environment and vibe there was really cool too because like when i think new york i always think of people just being a bunch of assholes and bumping into each other hey i'm walking here you know yeah yeah and uh everybody else was really nice i would say overall that people were super nice in new york yeah and uber man we rented a car and it was a big waste of it money. It was. We, we should have. We should have uh, just used Uber to get. We to took from, it twice to to the, the airport, airport and back, back to the airport. Yeah, there was nowhere to park. But or, the Uber was like, you know, I'm not much of an Uber driver, but it was so convenient in that city because they're everywhere. And uh, you know, we, we got to do Uber X too, so we had the extra big vehicles for all our gear and everything, and it was super accommodating. Um, we even got to take one of the Ubers to a place that you really loved, the Comedy Cellar. The comedy seller, dude. Comedy seller to me is like mecca when it comes to comedy because it's like where all the greats go to practice their new stuff. And of course, they have people that actually have, you know, pure comedy shows. That's the difference between comedy clubs. Or, or the, the difference is sometimes you hear of a comedian you like coming to your town, so you buy a ticket to their show. And that's their show. Like, they decide if they have an opener, they decide if there's like two or three people before them, and it's their you know, hour or two hours to do what they want with. But when a comedy seller is just open, they just sort of get a lineup of random comedians that just decide to call in and come in for the night. So you just get like blasted by like in 15 minute increments by these people just slaying you, you know, like left and right, just come up and drop the best shit they have, or they're trying new stuff. And so you can just get really good comedy really quickly. And also it gives you a lot of different styles really quickly. And, uh, they, they do that dumb thing, though, where you have to have two drinks if you go there. Oh, no, I have to drink alcohol while listening to comedians. Well, it's just because they want to make sure the club gets enough money. I think that's the main thing. Yeah, the club I mean, they got to keep that place afloat. I mean, and I love the Comedy Cellar because it's built like a comedy club. It's tight. It's intimate. Low ceilings. You're, like, on top of the people in there, you know? Like, you would disturb the place if you got up to use the bathroom. Exactly. And, I mean, I think that's intentional, too. I think it's the concept of you laugh a lot harder when you're laughing around other people. Yeah, because laughing is contagious. I loved that that dude brought a kid in there and the comedian <laughs> called him out. And he's like, yeah, bringing a kid in here. Real fucking good idea, man. <laughs> and then, As the kid's walking back, <laughs> yeah. he's like, uh, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. He's like, and yeah. And he's gone. And he's gone. Okay. He's like, yeah, so SpongeBob... <laughs> <laughs> we saw some pretty well-known comedians jim norton was there yeah jim norton was there that's what i'm talking about because the fucking comedy seller is like where it's at like if ck if ck lewis showed up or is that his name why am i saying uh, that louis wrong CK? louis ck why am i saying that backwards um if he showed up it would be standard policy because he lives in new york you know like i'm sure he stays in la a lot too mm -hmm. but it's that and then the comedy store in uh la mm -hmm. those are like the two big meccas and uh it made me sad that we didn't even think to go to the comedy store while we were in la that's true 
you know. We, but, we might even have had a little more free time there. We just didn't realize it. Yeah, we didn't even understand. But, man, we, we just packed a lot of good travel in lately, and it makes me really enjoy travel a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, travel is fun. I it, do think to fully enjoy it, you need to spread it out a little bit more. Yeah, us doing um, back-to-back is getting grinding. Because I'm not going to lie, I'm feeling a little jet-lagged, but uh, this is like the last big travel we're going to have for a while. Um, so let's just make sure to enjoy it as much as we can. Um, but... I would say that New York was definitely up there. I'd see. I'd say my three favorite cities have still been New Orleans, Los Angeles, and New York. I mean, that doesn't sound like a surprise at all. If you would have said oh, Idaho, Idaho was beautiful. Idaho was, was a just, nice it was state. Just, it was just different. But you got to like, you know, in New York you can go and you can walk around all over the place. In Idaho, you need a vehicle because it's all landscape. It's all landscape. There's not like a big city for you to walk around in unless you go to like say Boise or something. But we were not in Boise. We were in Idaho Falls. But in you know New York City, we had the we got to take the subway, which was really awesome. You know, we just we got to do a lot of things that encapsulated what it meant to be like a New Yorker, which is something that I really appreciated. Oh my god! I Anywho. love e- epic sax guy. Do 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 do. Oh okay. Okay. Well, anyway. you know what? I think that's uh, probably a good place to wrap up today's episode. Guys, I know this one was kind of a scatterbrained episode, but then again, a lot of these episodes are scatterbrained. It's just we've been so busy, and we had to carve out time today just to do this podcast for you. So thank you so much for everyone who has been listening. Uh, make sure to give us your topic ideas and other things that you want us to talk about. We have a lot of big shows that are coming up, a lot of Netflix and movies. We still haven't even seen Spider-Man Homecoming. We couldn't Uh, even fit it in this weekend because we had to go right back out of town. Exactly. I thought about trying to find a way to make it happen. Christian tried to make it it happen by seeing it with his fiance, and he just couldn't do it. So I'm guessing that hopefully next weekend, maybe the next, we'll have an opportunity to go see it and maybe do like a full podcast dedicated to Spider-Man Homecoming. And uh, if possible, we might even try to team up with some of the other people on uh, Rogue Intel Network who are uh, the amazing network of people that we work with. There's a lot of other shows that you guys need to check out. Uh, They're all really entertaining. In fact, we even just did another one with the Round Trip podcast. Uh, We were talking about the Wonder Woman movie, so make sure to check their show out as well. Um, And, of course, a great way to support this podcast as well as the other shows on Rogue Intel is to use our Amazon link. If you're buying any movies, music, TV, anything you want, make sure to check it out. Uh, The link is rogueintel.com slash Amazon. Make sure to use that for all of your shopping needs. But for now, that concludes this episode of the Power from the Nerdcast. Christian, you have anything else for us? Yo, you guys, live a good life. And until next time, the Powerful Nerdcast is out.